Hey guys, what's going on and welcome to the channel. Today's video we're going to be having some fun in an old, really old Chevy Avalanche. We're going to be installing this brand new Autobox X1 Pro. They took everything I hated about the X1 and fixed it. So let's go ahead, check out what is inside this X1 Pro and do a step-by-step -step install in this truck. So let's go ahead, open up this box and see what are the contents that are inside of here. As you guys can see here, it is a lot of stuff that comes within this box. It can actually be a little bit overwhelming, but the good news is the set of instructions that they provide you with is very, very clear. Everything is explained in very nice detail. So if you are just buying this product and don't want to watch the video, this is actually pretty good. I'm actually surprised that for once there's a set of instructions that's decent. This is the rear view mirror. And as you guys can see here, it has the display is going close to the edge. It's not a total edge to edge display, but it's relatively nice. And this is what I was looking for was a permanent bracket mounted system that did not just hang on top of a mirror and give it some weight problems. Now there is a camera on the forward side to uh, record like a dash cam. This is recording in 1080p and the SD card will go on the underside right over here. So you are able to extract all of your files from that micro SD card, which they do not provide to you. Now there are two sets of cables coming off of this. This is going to be going to the whole power mess over here and this is going to be going to the gps over there since this does have speed recording with gps capabilities this is the rear view camera that records in 1080p and yes you did hear me correctly records like its predecessor this is a dash cam that is also a backup camera so while you're driving your recording reverse and you're recording in the front so if you get rear-ended you'll be able to know if the person was paying attention or not it's nice that they give you multiple bracket options you guys can put this behind the license plate or you guys can put it on top of something and just nestle the camera hidden away and this over here this is the power supply for this unit this is going to plug in directly to that and then this is going to tap into the signal wire or your reverse signal source so those two go hand in hand. Now let's go back to talking about this mess. This mess over here is actually quite interesting because this camera comes with your add a fuse already on there. Now this is not something that I would have ever done to a vehicle, but it's an interesting approach. I may end up just cutting it here and doing my own connections from here forward. But as you guys can see here, this goes to the battery constant. So this needs to be going to a constant power source because this can record while your vehicle is off. This is gonna go to your accessories. So your accessories, when you turn on your key, the fuse that gets power when you turn on your key, that's what this is gonna be going to. So that's gonna allow you to use the lane departure system that comes with this vehicle and uh, to give some other functions some power like the GPS and then here you have the ground that's just going to go to a grounding point any clean metal will work and this is going to plug in to this up here these two are going to be connected to each other now it's nice that they give you a whole bunch of brackets here you have bracket for Jeeps you have brackets for Fords you have brackets for BMWs you have brackets for if you have a vehicle that you just want to add a bracket they give you this and some 3m tape and they got the bracket for the gm toyota honda you know all of this the standard that's this one right here the standard one and it's nice that they also do give you a little wire cable hider so when you're done it'll look nice and clean and professional so this is a very professional oriented system which i like um, some cons straight off the bat that I find interesting is the price point. The price point for this system is currently uh, $300. So it's up there in the prices 
and I'm dying to see how does this perform for that $300 price point because that's a significant amount of money and a lot of people are going to be a little bit reluctant to shell that kind of money out. So I'm hoping that everything is crystal clear and that this is a very, very smooth install. So let's get back to our old truck and start the install process. We are going to be removing the factory mirror. Now, I do understand that this mirror does have some basic functions, but these are useless functions that are not really needed. So we're going to go ahead and be detaching the power supply for this and tucking it in up top. If you do have a mirror that has OnStar or some other capabilities, you need to weigh out your options. Is it worth having that OnStar? Because if it is, then this is not your mirror for you. Now, lucky for me, this is when GM was deciding to put the OnStar down here. So this is a very, very old relic over here and um just gonna go ahead and get this thing out of here is installed or placed into position up top we can go ahead and start running the power from here and then running the cable out of the cab and towards the back of the truck so with the fuse box open you guys will be greeted with an array of fuses now each fuse box will be different each vehicle will be different and I'm gonna have to go in here and find out which one turns on when the vehicle has power and which one's on 24 seven. And for this, I'm gonna be using this 12 volt tester that I'm just gonna merely touch the little metal diode that is exposed on the top of the fuse. I'm just gonna to touch it like that and this will light up when I have found the correct fuse. Keep in mind, I need one that's always on and one that is on only when the key turns over to position one in the ignition. So as you guys can see here, I've already located the one that has power when the vehicle is off, and that is this 10 right up here on the top. As you can see here by me touching the little metal diode on the top side, it illuminates it, indicating that power is present. So I found one, now I need to find one that turns on when the vehicle turns on, and luckily I got a lot of number 10s to pick and choose from. If you don't have these 10s, you won't be able to use the uh, ghetto rigged factory hookup that comes here you'll just have to um, cut it off and use an add a fuse at your location or your desired location for the next part of the test we're going to be putting the key into the vehicle and putting it on to position one that's when the vehicle has officially turned over and it's ready to start but it's not started yet so now we're gonna have to find a 10, or in your case, whatever, one that powers up, and we got lucky. We got the one that's always on, and just confirming that it is always on even while it's in position one, and then one that is on when the vehicle turns on. Now, that is something that I did just mention that is very true to always test, turn on. Because sometimes when the vehicle turns on, these fuses will actually turn off. So that's something you don't want to deal with. So let's go ahead and just double check the fuses. That one still has power and this one still has power. So we're good to go. We found our two fuses that we need. Your case may be different, but that is the process of locating the ones that are desirable. Now that I have located the fuses, I can go ahead and begin running the wire, knowing that this is gonna be a successful install to my location. I'm gonna do that by removing this weather trim right here along the edge of the vehicle. That's just simply just a pull on it. You just begin to pull on it and it'll come off. It's no big deal. And then I will slide the wire back through here and I will run it over to that position. There's a constant. So we're gonna go ahead and put our constant, which is the yellow one that says B plus into it. Now we'll go ahead and switch out our accessory wire. The accessory one is gonna be a red one. That's the one that turns on when the vehicle has power. So we're gonna go ahead and just put that into position. All 
Now what's nice is they do have inline fuses right here. So those inline fuses will prevent any damage to the uh, screen up top. Now that we have our power in, we need to make sure we put our ground in. Now a good grounding point is somewhere where it's metal on metal. And this is a fantastic grounding point right here on this vehicle. A bad grounding point would be like this, plastic on metal. That's not gonna do anything. Or this right here, you have a metal and then you have plastic over it. That's not a good grounding point. So make sure you guys set up your grounding point in a good position. And now that you guys have successfully powered it up, given it ground, you can do a test to make sure that everything is functioning correctly. If by putting your keys in here, everything should power up. Perfect. Look at that. That dash cam view is amazing. Whoo! That may be one of my new favorites right there. But let's go ahead, finish this install so that way we can actually test it. The next part of the install is gonna require getting dirty and getting on your knees or putting down something to get from one end of the vehicle to the other end of the vehicle. So we're gonna be running the wire. This is our input for the backup camera. So we're gonna have to run all of this cable right here from here all the way to the back of the vehicle. Great point to put this camera where it would be protected from the elements as much as I could. I know it's weather resistant, but I wanna prolong its life as much as I can. So I located this spot between the tailgate and the license plate that has enough clearance so when you open up the tailgate, it can still live its life in here and you can still go backwards even with the tailgate down versus modern day trucks where they position it here so if you have the tailgate down you're just staring at the ground now what i'm going to do is route the wire all the way towards the front of the vehicle and then along the process i will go ahead and i will tap into the reverse signal so that's not a big deal i'll show you guys step by step how to do that from there So while you have the vehicle in reverse and the truck turned off, do this safely. Locate where is the reverse bulb. In this case, it's on the bottom part of the tail light. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna see two wires coming off of that reverse section. You're gonna have to find out which one of these is positive and which one of these is negative. So with the 12 volt tester, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna tap the wire and you can see which one of these illuminates when the vehicle is in reverse. So in this case, it is the green wire. The green wire is the reverse positive that illuminates that bulb. So this is the wire that we're going to be tapping. So now with the correct positive identified, you have two choices. Choice number one, as you guys can see here, I have a small little split here where I'm gonna solder on the little red wire onto it. Or if you guys aren't safe or don't feel safe soldering, you guys can use the quick splice and do it. Just keep in mind, these are subjectable to uh, corrosion where this, when it's on here and will be heat shrinked, it will be a lot more durable. So I know what a lot of you guys are thinking, how am I getting this cable inside of the truck? Well, this is a little known secret, especially on older vehicles, and this is definitely an older vehicle. Um, down here on the bottom, this is where they used to run the e-brake to. It ran right up under here on the floorboard, and then pops up right over there. Right where you see that cable going into, that's where it's going. So I'm just punched a little hole right next to it and then I'm feeding my wire all the way up so it's got a nice little safe spot. And now with the last cable plugged in, the very last thing we have to do is install the GPS, which is really, really easy. It's just gonna plug into that red cable and then I'm probably just gonna position it behind the mirror so the driver doesn't see it. So now we're gonna go ahead, unplug this little red cap plug in our GPS into it, hear that nice click. And if you want, put some tested tape around this, that way you don't have that metal tapping sound. Then we're gonna neatly tuck all this in up top and then place this on the windshield. 
And now that the GPS is successfully installed, which by the way, it also has a magnet so you guys can mount it onto the roof of your car or anywhere else that's metal, we can go ahead and test this product by turning on the truck and going through all the functions. And of course, oh yes, peeling that off is always nice. And now that the system is working perfectly, we're gonna go ahead and make some changes to the settings. This is the backup camera. You can always switch between your cameras by pressing this button right here. So now this is the forward facing camera. This is your dash cam essentially. Let's say you wanna go ahead and take a picture. You guys see something on the road, you just snap that. You hear that little stutter. And uh, you can also do that in the rear. Let's say somebody's getting really, really close to you or you see somebody really tailgating you, you can take a picture as well. Now, if you wanna go through and change your settings, you're gonna hit the stop button, just like that. And then click the gear logo. With the gear logo set, you'll be able to see your storage space up here. And this is the lane departure warning system if you wanna enable it or disable it. If you do a lot of nighttime driving and a lot of far driving, you're gonna to wanna to head and enable that. That way, if you start getting sleepy in any way, shape, or form, you will be able to uh, hear the beeping. And it's a loud beep. Um, I've already recorded a nighttime video. This is the exact same camera, so the video quality is not gonna change. Speed, uh, you can go between miles per hour and kilometers per hour. Driving mode, you can enable it, disable it. Date and time, you can set it up automatically via the GPS, which this is set up automatically. Um, you can even change it over to the 12 hour clock versus 24 hour clock. So I'm gonna leave it on the 12 hour clock. Let's go back and then go back into the settings. Resolution, it's 1080p. It's recording on 1080p. You do have the ability for uh, 1296, which is slightly below, but if you have the ability to do 1080p, just leave it. Loop time, this is really, really important. The longer the loops means the longer the file clips will be. If you have a one minute loop, that means if you get into an accident, you may have multiple videos that you are gonna have to grab and save those videos. So I typically leave it on three minute loops. That way it gets the individual the most amount of time and then that way you can record each packet the same. Uh, G sensor, you do have the ability to have the G sensor on here, which means if it detects impact, it'll lock that footage into place. And you also have the parking mode sensitivity. So um, low means somebody can throw a shopping cart into your car and it won't even detect it. High means that the shopping cart will definitely be detected and somebody banging on the hood of the car will instantly detect this and it will be able to record the whole incident. Volume, you do have volume options where you have medium, off, and high. That's good for the lane departure warning. LCD brightness, you can have it on manual or auto. There's auto, it's a lot brighter so during the daytime you can see visibly what is going on. You can record sound so within the vehicle you guys can have audio. I'm gonna go ahead and enable that for him. And languages, we're gonna leave it on English, but I always get asked all the time, what are the languages that are supported by every product that I use? So let's go down the list. We have English, we have I don't know how to pronounce that, we have I don't know how to pronounce that, we have Dutch, French, and I don't know how to pronounce that. So if uh, these are the languages. Of course, you guys have the GPS info, you have the parking lines, you can enable those parking lines, you can disable the parking lines. This is the GPS uh, signal strength here. You typically want three green ones, and then you guys can reset everything. So that is the entire system right there. It says that the GPS is okay. That means that there's no weak signal. It's gonna be recording the speed and the time. So let's, let's say I want to get out of this whole screen right here. I can just tap the power button and now I'll go into this lane departure thing with the miles per hour. So I can drive like this and see my speed and this thing will tell me if my vehicle is exiting any lane 
accidentally. As you guys can see here, it's telling me that the vehicle right now is going about 17 miles an hour. And if I come down here, it is actually pretty dang accurate. I'm slowing down right now to get over a speed bump. But the GPS is really, really accurate. It's definitely good at telling me which way is north. In this case, it is to my left. The red arrow always points to north. Um, right now, the vehicle is headed east. There's the date and time on there. Everything's all nice and clear. And yes, I can still see out of the rear view mirror, I can see what's going on behind me. But let's say I don't want to use that rear view mirror. Let's say I would just want to use the full electronic capabilities. I'll just leave it like that and I'll just drive around. And guess what? I can see everything that is happening behind me as I am driving. And that is a really, really good, safe feature. It works out really, really well. And I can only imagine that the quality of this is the exact same as the original X1 since the components have not changed. The camera is still the same and the daytime quality camera is still the same as well. All right guys, now that I have successfully installed this and I have tested it momentarily, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys my thoughts and my opinion since I have installed a lot of backup cameras and dash cams over my life. This system is extremely nice. The quality is the exact same as the original X1, which is phenomenal. I love the video quality of that system. I find it very hard to find another dash cam and another rear view camera that have 1080p recording. A matter of fact, I think that there's only a handful and I can count them off my hand that actually have 1080p recording. So that's a huge accomplishment. If you really want that high resolution for your video safety, if you really need that ultra HD recording capabilities, this is gonna be your system. This is gonna be the one that you're gonna want. Now, some drawbacks of it that I have, now these may be my personal gripes. Um, number one, for the life of me, I could not figure out how to get that speed and that lane departure warning system to stop showing up on there till I decided to read the owner's manual and now I feel like an idiot but in the owner's manual it did say if you turn off the lane departure warning system that whole thing will go away so uh, I could have just done that from the get-go and had a nice clean looking mirror there so uh, that's that's a lived and learned experience for you guys another gripe that I have with the whole system and I'm gonna show you guys this right now is the way that the camera has to be. Originally in the video, you guys saw that I installed the camera a different way and I thought that it was gonna work out beautifully. Turns out it can't be like that. The camera has to have this massive flat part up on top instead of the nice curvature part on top. So now I need to put this ugly flat part up on the top, which I don't understand because you guys have it here mounted onto the license plate like the way that they want it it's gonna look bad it's gonna look awful with this giant piece of metal sticking out like that i would hope that in the future maybe they do a firmware update to this unit where you can rotate the orientation of the camera i think that would be a fantastic selling point if you guys could put that camera in another angle like that but overall i am extremely pleased with this system it is a phenomenal system and it's really really great so much for watching this video give it a big thumbs up if you guys learned something new and also considering subscribing to the channel i would love to have you as part of the community in the meantime take care